who says he will no longer hide the truth. Bob Lazar claims our government captured alien spaceships, UFOs, and keeps them in a secret warehouse. And that's not all. Bob says Uncle Sam hired him to figure out how they fly. If you're skeptical, you have plenty of company. Lazar has been questioned and criticized. He even had to take a lie detector test. And that's when some people started believing him. Dan Housley has the inside report. The man who wants to blow the lid off what could be the greatest story never told. And the people who seem to be trying to stop him. <laughs> Strange lights over Las Vegas, within view of tourists and gamblers along the city's casino row. What are the odds these are alien spacecraft out for an evening spin? Or would you bet they're simply standard aircraft, or worse yet, some kind of hoax? Before you decide, take a look at another shot on this home video, where what does appear to be an aircraft strays into view along with the lights. Strange things like this have been appearing over the Nevada desert for years. The answer to the mystery may lie in the sprawling Nevada nuclear test site just north of the city in a place called Area 51. Area 51 is known by other names, Groom Lake, Dreamland, the Skunk Works. It's an isolated military facility where the U.S. develops its most top secret projects. The U-2 spy plane was developed here. So was its replacement, the high-flying Blackbird, along with the current stealth aircraft and Star Wars. But there are some who believe these formerly secret projects are nothing compared to what's currently under wraps. Not too many people live out here in the remote sections of the Nevada desert far from the lights of Las Vegas. But here, on the edge of the secret U.S. government test facilities, people have been seeing strange things for years. Some of them talk about it, a lot of them don't. But no one who has actually worked on the test site has ever talked about what goes on there. No one, that is, until now. They are actively and have in their possession uh, alien spacecraft, and they are actively uh, undergoing analysis. And flying them? And flying them. Bob Lazar is an engineer and Lazar physicist who says he worked on flying saucers for the U.S. government at Area 51. He drew these sketches of one of nine different saucers he says the government has in a secret warehouse. Lazar gave the saucers each names according to their various shapes. Top hat, the sport model, the jello mold. Called in to help figure out how they work, Lazar says the saucers are powered by an antimatter generator, fueled with an element which he says could only have come from another planet. They set up and produce their own gravitational field. Just as the Earth holds all matter down, they produce that same field, but out of phase, and it, it repels itself. The effects that can cause the way in which everything operates is, is by all intents and purposes, magic. I mean, it is so far beyond uh, our level of technology. Now, before you toss Lazar on the pile with all the other UFO wackos, understand that he willingly agreed to take a lie detector test, requested and independently arranged by a Las Vegas reporter. Terry Tavernetti is the ex-cop who administered the test. If he's lying, uh, he ought to be in Hollywood because he gave absolutely no physiological indications of attempting deception. Lazar says he was referred to his government job by Dr. Edward Teller, the renowned scientist who helped develop the atomic bomb. But in a rare interview with Inside Report, Teller insisted he doesn't know Lazar, or at least doesn't remember him. I think it, it appears that someone's trying to wipe him out. George Knapp is the Las Vegas TV reporter who first aired Bob Lazar's amazing claims. He says he ran into unusual problems just trying to look into Lazar's background. Though Lazar claimed to have once worked at the Los Alamos National Laboratory, government officials denied they knew anything about him. But when Knapp came up with a phone directory listing Lazar's name, Los Alamos grudgingly admitted he had spent some time there. Officials at the hospital where Lazar was born even denied the simple fact he was born there, until Knapp tracked down the doctor who delivered Lazar. I find Bob to be credible, and, and the main reason is because the story hasn't changed. It stayed 
from the beginning. It's been the same. Uh, it hasn't expanded like some of these UFO tales you hear. It's been the same. And we've been through a lot of different interview sessions, many on camera, many more off camera. And it stayed exactly the same, consistent. But even inside the community of UFO believers, there are many who are skeptical of Bob Lazar's claims. Nuclear physicist Stanton Friedman says Lazar may indeed be the real thing. But he says he can also believe Lazar might be a hoaxer. Or worse yet, a government agent spreading false stories designed to cover more important secrets. I find Bob Lazar as somebody who isn't silly, who doesn't say totally stupid things, who comes across well. But I certainly, until I get verification, cannot endorse the legitimacy of what he is saying. Bob Lazar says he quit his job working on the government saucers when his bosses began harassing him because he was letting others in on the big secret. But now that others are greeting his claims with skepticism and outright hostility, he says he wishes he just kept his big mouth shut. Lazar says he never took the idea of breaking security lightly. He just wanted to let the world in on a story he says we all should have been told. Why keep a secret about probably one of the most important events in history, that there's been contact from an alien civilization? It's a significant event in history, more significant than anything. Could be. We'll see. Well, this